Oh, oh, it's Derek. I was wondering where you were. I was down there. At what, at what time? At nine. Which which drinking fountain? No, no. I was I was at the bottle depot. No, that's not where we agreed to meet. Oh, where did we agree to meet? By Mount Douglas Crossroad. Anyway, let's go. Oh. Okay. Grab your bike. Grab your shoes. I mean, I'll meet you outside here. Well, I'm glad I hooked up with you. Do you have any double A batteries? It's just that I have... Too many. You do? I have too many. Well, that would be helpful, because I'm short of batteries here. I think what hap what's happening is that because the batteries are low, it's the lens is going back inside the camera. Oh, automatically. Yeah, because the battery is low. I think that's what's happening. I forgot for a second which way. <laughs> I went up that road first. I'm like frowning at you for a second there. Yeah. What are you doing? Is this the right way? No. Good. I hate to be a recycled person. Well, I saw a guy today collecting bottles f from the uh, recycle bins. He had a bicycle with him. And he had these great big garbage bags full of bottles. That's better. You notice how much noisier it is on the gravel. You know what they say, noise is friction. Friction is working against you. Yep, noise and friction create heat. Or the other way around. So, I'm cycling along here with Derek on the Lockside Trail. There's Derek behind me. And I have my, my wrist-mounted microphone, but it's on the same hand that I'm using to hold the camera, which means that if I put the camera behind my back, the sound goes quiet because the microphone goes behind my back. Hello. So this is where Graham and I do all our running. All right, I'm gonna put it away for a second. And then uh, when I do it again, I'll use the other hand. Then I'll have a little more freedom with the microphone placement. Does uh, Sandy still want to do it? I think so. Yeah, then it came out, but the ideal length for me, I think, is 48 minutes. Hello. Cyclist coming through the side. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, your sounds more like a cowbell. So this is quite a swanky neighborhood, as you can it see. Makes it, uh, basically it does. So three. 
Well, yeah, you could do three sessions of bicycle and running combined, or four. Arbutus tree. Oh, that was close. Hey? Eh? Yeah, I was looking the wrong way. I almost came a cropper then. Anyway, let me put the camera away before I drop it. Are we uh, going to uh, are we going to Manus Farm on the way back? I think that would be better, yeah. yeah. We'll go to the pigs, take a short video, and then head back to Maddox Farm and maybe get an ice cream. No? Oh, they probably have iced tea. I finished off the e-load today. I put the last of it in my bottle and topped it up with water. With wawa. With wawa. I topped it up with wawa. Water? Yeah. That's a Spanish way of saying water. No, that's a kid's way. That's what little babies say. Talking of little babies, I saw a video today on YouTube of a little baby, just a t an infant, basically just about walking, fell into a pool. And you saw the baby swimming. He'd never been taught to swim. He was trying to stay on his back and breathe. And after a, about... 10 seconds he stopped kicking and uh, just floated on his back and I thought hey wait a minute who's filming this why aren't they helping the poor baby yeah. you know and then at the end you saw a guy in the pool go over and pick up the baby and give him a big hug but even so you know they were putting they were putting the baby in danger But the thing about that is, you know, that video has probably been watched two million times. Yeah, I mean, you don't want the, the wrong person seeing that video. Well, no, it's not so much that. It's just that they've done that video. Two million people have seen it. And they put the little baby at li life at risk. Just so that the video will go viral. I would call that exploitation. I'd call that child exploitation because they even had a camera underwater so they set the whole thing up Things, uh, humans do for amusement, amusement. well I think it's probably more for money because I don't know if you know this but you get, you get about like a quarter of a cent every time somebody watches one of your videos if you monetize it. So if that video has been watched two or three million times, he's probably got a couple of thousand bucks just by posting that video. Hello. I would arrest the man. I'd go and arrest him for putting his child in life in danger. I should have brought my fanny pack. 
for my camera that I could put it away easily and get it out easily. Like this, I'm having to hold the camera in my hand even when I'm not filming because I can't get it out of my pocket. Uh. There's another one of those bicycle stations. I'm just going to put some more air in my tire. It's good that they put these things here. So you see how convenient everything is here in Victoria? It's called a public work stand. You could put your bike up here on the bars. Yeah, you've got all those different wrenches down here. You've got a pump. Anyway. Let's hope this pump works. Because sometimes when you're fiddling around with the uh, valve, the, all the air comes out of your tyre, and if the pump doesn't work, then you're hooped. Hope for the best. Hi. Right. Seems to be working. Pressure's going up. Okay, that should be enough. Oh, the smell of the pigs. The good old stink of the pigs. Just leave my bike in the bushes there. So here we are on the Lockside Trail. It was after the lab. It reminds you of when you were in Saskatchewan? Yeah, when I was like zero years old to five years old. Look at that. Yeah. Apples and turnips. How do the pigs get that over there? I don't know. I think that maybe somebody should kick them back into the into the field for the pigs. Otherwise it's going to go to waste, isn't it? So, Derek, shall I take a video of the pigs? Well, I can go closer to the fence, but that's an electric fence. Where that yellow little wire thing is, that's the electric fence. It does, yeah. Yeah, but I can get pretty close like this. Ah, lucky I brought the batteries. It, it didn't open this time. So the batteries must have been low. I'm rustling in my pocket now for Derek's batteries. I just don't like rubbing my microphone too close to the to my clothing. All right, so let's see if Derek's batteries are any good.
Are you sure these batteries are good? Oh yeah. They came out. The, the lens came out. And there are the pigs. You see the pigs sleeping? Hello piggy. There's two of them there. Big, as you can see. Huge hogs. The huge hogs. There's one of those sightseeing planes, Derek. What was that? Yep, that right there. She watch. Oh wow. They're oh, eating. Oh no, you missed it. Yeah, the other one that was. I guess that one's too big. But the other lettuce it was like. Go. Oh, okay. It swallowed it down in one go. Yeah. Look at the way they're scratching around for. Well, not in one gulp, but like a vacuum, like. It sucked it in, inhaled it. You wonder if they touch the electric fence whether they would get electrocuted. Maybe it's not an electric fence. I don't think that's an electric fence. No. You, you could try, but Norma might get mad at me. No, I don't want to touch it, just in case it is an electric fence. Hey, you caught up with us. Well done. Well, we said we were going to ride to see the pigs, but the pigs are sleeping. They don't want to come out of their little... Oh, out, of the out of their... What is it sun. called? A sty? A pig sty? Yeah. Uh, this is just a shed. A shed? I think. Yeah. Because Where do they sleep? There's actually quite a uh, rules and regulation for a pig sty. Oh, I to, see. Uh, so they're not allowed to keep to the pigs. To house them? Yeah. I don't know. I, I saw this on TV. Maybe uh, they have to take them inside for the night. I don't know. Who knows? Kian Savi. Uh. All right, Derek, have we seen enough? Uh, no. Nope, no. you won't. He, it reminds him of when he was a kid. He grew up on a farm. Yeah. The smell of the, of the manure. Oh, yeah. And the chickens. <laughs> Fresh eggs. Oh, that would be nice, eh? Yeah. Fresh eggs. Look, or look at the color, too. Yeah. yeah. Even though um, at the uh, thrifty store, whatever, I buy the so called free range. Yes. It's never. They're never as good as the. No, they these don't legs. have access to grass. It's these the ones grass would. These ones would be the, very tasty yeah, eggs. That uh, give them the. Uh, you know, it's the it, grass has carrot so yeah. it gives that orange. How far are you running today? Oh, today is a bag day. It's a, it's a rest day run? Yeah, yeah, I did a really long run on Tuesday and a bike ride yesterday. Wow. And this morning my legs didn't want to move. I, I assume you're retired, eh? I am, yeah. Yeah, me too. Yeah. So I can run every day, and that's what I'm doing now, pretty much. Every day? Yeah, near enough. You know, I, I run as much as I can, but I, I limit myself to 10 hours a week. I don't oh. do more than that. Okay. But right. I try and get as close to 10. Yeah, every day. I don't know. It you works out at about an hour and 20 a day. The way I understand is that every time you do any kind of exercise, the, some of the capi capillaries break. Yeah. So you have internal bleeding. You need time to repair. So you need to repair. Some yeah. people just carry through it. but Then you get the buildup of, of a pr prolonged injury. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Um, I'm never 100%, I, like, I know that much. I like, you know, mix and match. Yeah. So if you do something else, it uses different muscles. So that well, That's why I'm on my bike today. There you go. You see? Oh, that's a beautiful bike. That's Derek's bike. Mine's in the bushes over there. Wow. <laughs> that's a beauty. Yeah, it's got good suspension. Carries yeah. his weight well. I, uh, I try, I'm trying to sell my time trial bike. And you do triathlon? I did one last year. You did one. But I, I used to do uh, time trials. Yes. Uh, I was I belonged to a proper club. A ro road racing. In in Edmonton, wow. and we had weekly events, provincial events, etc. You probably win medals, eh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the older we get, the closer the we get to the podium. If we keep I going, I know. I know. You're probably number one in your age group. I was last year in the triathlon. Well done. Yeah. 
What's that, 50 to 55? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Cannot go wrong to go below. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Are you from Holland? No, no. I thought you had a bit of a I do have European accent. accent. I do, yes. Uh, I'm not going to guess again. You t- okay. You're going to have to tell me. Czech. Czech. Mm-hmm. You wanted the bouncing Czechs? Yes. <laughs> or the, you know, when uh, the bear eats uh, the, the hunters and then the sort of the... Uh, end of the story is and the check is in the mail the check is in the mail <laughs> <laughs> there That's are a two good bears one. that ate <laughs> yeah. anyway, um, the check is in the mail of course yeah not the female but the male yeah, yeah. yeah I remember hearing one about a similar different. story about uh, hikers and the bear bell oh yeah <laughs> and they were talking about you can always tell when there's hikers and bears because you'll see these little bells on top of these piles of scat. Yeah, so if you if you see uh, just the blueberries, yes. uh, then that's okay. They they're busy feeding on blueberries. But if you see these little bells, watch out! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They discovered the tourists. <laughs> They've discovered the hikers. Are you doing a half our half marathon today? She's, no, no, no. no, she's no, pr- no. I guess you're doing about five uh, miles today. No, Eight no, kilometers. I, I don't care what I do. I I needed to do some shopping at Matix. Yeah. Um, I missed my proper run, which was at Royal Roads with this group that I run on Thursday. I know them, the Royal Roads uh, runners. No, no this is Team um, Thurs- de Fuca? Thursday Morning Gang. It's it's an offshot of uh, Prairie Inn Harriers. I belong to that club. You so do. you probably know Morris Tarrant of and course. John Woodall. Of course, yeah, those yeah, are my yeah, playmates. Yeah. Those are your playmates. Oh, yeah. well, I, I knew you were a good runner. John Woodall, hey, you know him. He knows yeah, John Woodall. Yeah. John Woodall is an inspiration to us all. He's 80-something now, 82 or 83. Is he 80 now? Yeah, oh, no, that's yeah. right. You know, he was always in the shadow of Maurice. But Maurice uh, uh, backed off his training and then John went into the next age group. Yeah, yeah. So now it's all right. Uh, but... I'm just going to say he's equally tremendous. And they're like equally talented. Uh, they're yeah, inspiring, aren't they? Uh, it's uh, Maurice that gets, of course, all the records. And, oh. and so forth, and I'm looking forward one day to <laughs> beating some of Maurice's records for his 80-year-old Ooh, runner. I don't know. I don't think I, I will, know. ever. What do you do for, uh, what's your pace uh, for 10K? Uh... Seriously now, probably 50 minutes. I've had that problem so many times. Um, I think it was one time when Spring was having problems. Yeah. At the bank. Uh, they wouldn't give her um, a new bank card because she, they didn't have her ID. And so I said, oh. Um, and I said to her, just go to a different bank, and then her mom says, "Oh no, don't they say the same thing?" I'm like, "Nope, nope." Come with me, Sabrina. We'll go to my bank. They're very nice people. And yeah. then she didn't have her ID, oh, yeah. and they said, "Okay, we'll give you, uh, we'll give you a new card as long as you give us your phone number and your name, and your address." Yeah. Right, and they said, "I'm just yeah. going to turn the audio off because I don't want it going off when we're inside." I guess, like, so I just told her, don't go to that bank again, just go to my bank. My bank's way more nicer. Yeah, I hate that. Every time, there's always different customer service. Somebody will give you a better customer service than the person that gave you bad customer service. It should be good customer service all the time, not just one person says something different from the other person. Yeah. Sabrina gets bad customer service, so I just say, well, we'll go somewhere else. Mm. Yeah, and the the other thing is that, like what you were saying about never judge a book by the cover. Yeah. And they looked at me, they thought, bandana, beard, scruffy looking guy. He might have just stolen somebody's backpack and he's going to try and make off with the cash. Because I told her, I said, I've got my passport, I've got my BCID, I've got everything with me to prove who I am. But still, if I'd stolen somebody's backpack, if they looked a little bit like me, I could still have got away with 
you know. I could have used Saddam Hussein's uh, ID and they said, oh, he looks a bit like that guy. So yes, everybody. I thought that was Marie, but that's another woman. Hello. And Donald Trump also said uh, mm -hmm. the American dream has died. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Yeah. Why would Donald Trump say such a thing? Because well, he's got enough money. He could say whatever he likes. Yeah. And a lot of people, they say, yeah, we agree with what he's saying. You know, because they think, well, if we go with him, maybe we'll get some of his money. You know. But really and truly... It's how they treat the most, the least fortunate in the society. That's how they judge the society, not by how the best people live. It's how the, they treat the worst people, the people who are at the bottom of the ladder. Oh, yeah. If they treat them like they're inferior, then it's not a very good society. Obama's going to let him go in. Well, Obama has to give up. He can't stay for another term. Why? Because there's a limit. They, they, they can do so many years, and then they have to hand it over to somebody else. It's written into their constitution. Oh, so, like Bill Clinton was only from 1993 to uh, 1998. I'm not sure. I don't really. I don't really follow the American politics. I don't follow Canadian politics either, really. I wanted Bill Clinton's wife to get in. Hillary? Yeah. Well, she might still do. She, she might. Might. Uh, she's a Democrat. She's not a Republican. She's an. She going to be a candidate? Yep. I think. Believe she is running for president. I think she will, will, will get in. You know why? Because the Americans are like that. They've had a movie star president. Yeah. They've had uh, two from the same family, no, the really, Bushes. No, They've Arnold's, had a black president. Arnold's now they're going to have a white president. I mean, a woman. Arnold Schwarzenegger wasn't a president. No, 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 no. A movie star, Ronald Reagan. He was a movie star? Yeah. Oh, yeah, he was in the World War movies. He was in the World War movies, exactly. Wasn't John F. Kennedy in the World War movies, too? No, 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 no. He was in the World, in the world War, but he oh. wasn't a movie star. Ronald Reagan was acting as a, sol as, a, as, a, as a hero, but Kennedy was a hero. Yep. Well, Judy Mick, the woman that I've been running with all month, virtually, she and I decided that we weren't going to try and beat each other too much. She went out and ran, I think it was... 12 miles or something today, this morning, and uh, 20k, about that, yeah. It put her, it puts her nine kilometers ahead of me for today. Hang on a second. You want to swing around, just for a second. See the view? Yeah. That's Mount Baker. All that out uh, with white snow? Yeah. Hmm. Incredible, isn't it? And it's it's almost it August. It seems like a painting. It does, isn't it? It looks like the Alps. Yeah. But that is one of the highest mountains in North America. Mount Baker. Yeah. It's an it's an old volcano and it has snow all the year round. I can always hear you, you coming because you have knobbly tires. I've done 26 kilometers today. You've probably done about 20. You've almost done a half marathon. I've seen him before. 
What? Yeah, we're just going to come up to it now. That's where we should meet next time we do a bike ride. On the other side of the big bridge. Well, I'm glad I got to come up and see you because I thought we were going to miss out on our workout today. But when we get to the water fountain, Derek, I'm going to turn off for Gordon Head. You're going to keep going straight. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? You're such an active woman. I, I, I'm really impressed. Yeah. Whenever I'm out running or, or cycling, you're doing the same. You don't run? No. I walk. Oh, you walk. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we just went out to see the pigs. Uh, yeah, they really nice, aren't they? Yeah, it's a nice distance. It's what, 20... From where I live, it's about a 28 kilometer round trip oh. to the pigs and back. And my friend Derek, he lives near Swan Lake, so we meet here at the bench and then we go and do the pigs and back. It's a nice, nice ride. Though. It is nice, yeah. yeah. And it's, on the bike, it, it's just breezy enough so you don't get too, too hot. Yeah, that's the advantage of cycling. You always make a breeze while you cycle. You're creating your own wind. Yeah. That's right. Because yeah. running, it's almost impossible not to get too hot. Even in the winter, you sweat like crazy. Yeah. We saw Marie today. We bumped into a woman called Marie, an older woman from Edmonton. Yeah, yeah. She said that she was supposed to be running with the Harriers, the Thursday morning gang, yeah. at Royal Roads, but she decided to come out this way instead. Said she was running? Mm -hmm. Oh, good for her. I don't know why running's never appealed to me. Well, I think with running is it's a very quick way of getting that burn you get the calorie burn that you're looking for but it also is quite uh, traumatic on the body yeah. and I guess you're in for the long haul you don't yeah. want to burn out too soon no yeah so you're doing the less stress stressful on your body but you're still doing you know you probably do 12 or 15 hours a week of, of cycling and walking yeah. Probably more. I don't do you drive anywhere? No, I don't drive at all. Me neither. No. Gave up my license something like 20 years ago. I gave up my license uh, when I turned 60. Yeah, yeah cuz my eyesight is getting worse and worse and worse. Mine too. But my you know my wife she said very smart. She said to me, "You know what? I think it might be cataracts." I said, "Why?" She said, "Well, you never wear sunglasses." You're always out at midday, you're always running in the sun. You probably burnt your eyes out. And it's, she's, she might be right. Yeah. My dad didn't get his cataracts done until 63. Your dad? Yeah. He had a cataract operation? His first one was on 63 years old. Ah, that's what I am now. I had, I've had both done. Your cataracts? Quite a long term ago. Yeah. It might well be what my wife's saying then. It's probably because we don't wear sunglasses. We don't protect our eyes from the uh, radiation. Mm -hmm. ah. I, do. I, do. I don't care. Well, I do care, but you know how I, what I always look at it, I say, well, what would a caveman have done in my situation? 
They didn't have ophthalmologists, they didn't have surgery, they didn't have doctors. They would have just toughed it out. They would have just carried on. They were not blind, did they carry on? They just carried on. Yeah. Oh, you mean the caveman days? In the caveman days, well, yeah. after the caveman days, it was witch doctors. The witch doctors, yeah. yeah. No, but it really and truly, what did a caveman do if he broke his leg? He would just limp for a little while and stay with the women at the ah. back. And then when he was fit, he would go and hunt again. But if he wasn't fit, he would help help with the dogs and help with the kids, basically. But they had to hunt to eat. Yes. Well, I don't actually have to hunt to eat. I'm lucky. They, and, and we, none of us do, but that's what, that's what kept them going. They had to hunt to they eat. They had to keep moving, that's right. Yeah. They didn't have the internet. No. No. That's for sure. And they didn't have television. No. Yeah. Anyway, so Derek, it's been a great uh, little ride that we did today. Yeah. I'm going to go that way, back home, and you're going to go that way. Okay. And then, uh, which way are you going? You're going that way? No, yeah, that you're going that way. Mm -hmm. uh, that's probably why I see you quite often. I live in Gordon Head. Yeah, yeah, I live in Cadbury Bay. Ah. Yeah. Lots of people out today. Yesterday, Derek and I went for a run on, on the same stretch further down, and we were counting cyclists as opposed to pedestrians. Yeah, yeah. And Derek got to up to about 60 cyclists, and I got up to about 12 pedestrians. Yeah. And I was counting women with strollers, I was counting people with dogs. Hi. Look at them all. Yeah, everybody. We saw these people at uh, Adrian's tea shop. Yeah. That's a lot of bicycles. It's a lot of cyclists, yeah. But it's nice when you have an active community like we have here. Yeah, and it's nice to have these trails. Oh, it's so much better than when we had to cycle on the road. Oh. You know what's coming up? I couldn't stand that, I tell you. you know, if I had to ride on the road, I would probably just walk. Yeah. I wouldn't bother because... You know, it's scary. The cars don't give you any leeway. No, they used to be much better than they are now. Yep, they have no courtesy anymore. No, they're all in a hurry. Yep, and they're rushing to get to the gym, and then they, they try and park as close to the door as they can get, <laughs> so they don't have to walk. <laughs> Do you see that, that um, on the news, that guy getting mad at that woman? Workout for for um because the woman was trying to care for his puppy. His dog, his, yeah. 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 Like... I didn't see that. No, I, I actually, I don't watch TV anymore. I gave that up as well. It's young like, adults now, they just don't Autobots. have no respect for for anything now. Hey, yeah. Hang on, my lady's telling me to get going again. <laughs> She's telling me, workout resume. No, not quite yet. I'm chatting, can't you tell? Ah, oh, oh, here comes another pedestrian. I want it to rain soon. Yeah, well, Derek, you suffer from the heat a lot. Uh, the two cyclists to the one for death. Yeah, and she's a triathlete as well. Uh, three cyclists to the one. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's a triathlete. You know her? No, nope, but I can tell by her outfit that she's a cyclist and a runner. She's got a lot of upper body muscle as well. Look at that. She's... Hi. I don't know who she's waving to. Is she waving to me? Yeah. Hello. Uh, who are you? Who are you waving to? All of us. Carlos. Si. Yeah. How are you? The jackal. What do you expect? <laughs> Mariola. Mariola. That's right. You yeah. were at Elk Lake. Yes. For the you're a tri star. Mm -hmm. Excellent. I said to I said to my friend Derek, this woman is a triathlete. I could tell by her build. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You have the muscles. No, I wish I had tiny. arms as strong as you. <laughs> I used to be a paddler. Oh, what, kayak or paddle? Oh, canoe. 15 years. Outrigger canoe. Outrigger. Okay. Yeah, so oh, no. losing that slowly. I'm built like a canary from the waist up. Oh, yeah. You know, no but no muscles. <laughs> but you run beautifully. Thank you. Yeah. You see, she's noticed. I'm into yeah. efficiency. I'm trying to burn as few calories as possible. And cover as much distance as possible. Yeah. That's my goal. 
Are I you? No, you're not racing this weekend. So no, I, I don't. Racing, you're doing. I do ultra marathon. Yeah, with the, the same time when uh, Lindsay Miller is doing that, yes. uh, that one. When is it? Next month. It's the fifteenth of August. She's going to Squamish and she's going to be running fifty miles, I believe, in the mountains. But I don't compete anymore in that that kind of craziness. If I went to that race, I would volunteer to be the sweep runner, and I would follow everybody else to make sure nobody got lost. Oh, I need a guy like that because I have no sense of direction. <laughs> But then you're oh. guaranteed to be penultimate finisher. You know what? And I you're did probably once. more competitive than that. I, I did my first half marathon just for fun. I didn't train much. Just you know, see if I can do it. And here in Victoria, and we start. At, I think it was Oak Bay. Yeah. Oh, I, I can't remember now. And we started six. Yeah, you had an early start. Yeah, so the volunteers were not ready. Everything in that, mm -hmm. and I was—I don't know how it happened—but I was at the front first, and right behind me was a guy running. Yeah, and I, of course, went yeah. off the course, right? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, that's and the he problem. He was running also behind me and yelling, "Oh, you're going wrong way." Okay, yeah, so that's, that's the me. trouble <laughs> with the early start. If you go early, you don't have anybody to follow. Mm -hmm. Not until the pack catches up I with you. I was so surprised. Of course, later people pass me. Right? Yeah, then you know that you're in the on the right course. I didn't know how to pace myself. And yeah. you need a trainer. You need a coach, a distance coach. Yeah, you run here. I know. Yeah, yep. yeah. I I don't uh, I don't. Tra Derek's my my prodigy. He 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 is working on his baseball. He wants to lose some weight because uh, he's playing in the Special Olympics. Oh yeah. Yeah, as a base softball or baseball. Softball. 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 Yeah. So he's an MVP, aren't you? Yeah. You could be even more of an MVP. You can be super MVP. Uh, well, we're one of our one of our um, players. He almost made it to MLB to What's Major that? League Baseball, but he quit uh, baseball and he focused on running instead. Right. So, okay. Nice. Running is a very cheap way of getting a good, lot of exercise, but it's also hard work. Yeah, it's yeah. hard. And then once you get rid of the competitive uh, as aspect, then it can be enjoyable again. So many people, they're still trying to grab that brass ring. I start triathlon just, just to enjoy it. Here I am. Yeah, but you're still very competitive, you see, because you're in... in, in uh, Firstly, being female, there is less uh, heavy aspect on, on winning. That's true. Yeah. So yeah. you're in a group of less competitive athletes, yeah. and you're probably more competitive than most of them. I am very competitive, but I don't mind if I'm not right in the front as long as I have fun and I have a good race. Yeah. I can tell. And Does I your be last one? No, no. That's, that's why. You, as long as you're not last, dead last. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't mind being dead last, but I do that because it's like my volunteer duties. Oh yeah. When we ran at Thetis Lake, you know the races up there, Bob's races, at the Harriers that they mm -hmm. do. Well, the trouble with running a race in the boonies is that people do really? get lost. And mm -hmm. then you can't really say it was a successful there, event mm -hmm. if three people had to get the okay. get bailed out by the police or the ambulance or, you know, they had to ask a hiker, how do I get back to the main beach? Yeah. So whenever he does a race in the wilderness, he says, Carlos, you go last, make sure nobody goes gets lost. And if they get tired of you talking, they'll move ahead of you. And then you'll be stuck with somebody else who's going to be last. And then eventually I end up gravitating to the very last person and then we finish and then when the volunteers see me go by they say okay he's here comes Carlos this must be the end of the race yeah. and then they can pack up and go home so yeah. having a sweep runner at the end of an event is a very good idea especially yeah, if you're and not running walking yeah but some of the runners oh, nice your face she's everywhere yeah she and me we we, 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 we monitor the whole area for activity Derek Put it there. Try and ride to work tomorrow, all right? Mm, yeah, I'll try. It's so quick. He lives just on Swan Lake here, mm -hmm. and he works in Telecom. I said, you jump on your bike, you could be in Telecom in 12 minutes. 
That's true. If you wait for the bus, you're going to be waiting for 40 oh, minutes. Never wait for bus. No. You walk faster than bus. Before. You could walk from your, from where you live. Yeah. You could walk it quicker than yeah. waiting for the bus. Well, it's nice to see everybody. Hasta la próxima. Hasta la próxima. Stay active. I'm going to be chasing her now. Bye bye. Bye, Mariana. Well, that is just about it. I have enough material for a whole week of shows, but I won't. I will edit this to fit in with the video. And the rest I will make as two separate interviews, which I might put out next week. I'm not sure. Next week I'm going to be involved with the Zen Veda. So I will be recording every day next week but they will be very short episodes. What I might do with today's recording is I might put them out as the longer shows for next week. Thank you. So this is the running jackal saying goodbye to everybody once again and I'm going to be busy editing all of this.